Uh, first of all, can I just remind you um, what the Churchill Trust is all about? Our ethos uh, was Sir Winston felt, bearing in mind he was a man of empire, he was a man of the northwest frontier of South Africa, he was First World War, he was Second World War, he was Cold War. He felt that if British citizens travelled to other countries, met other people and understood their issues and perspectives, it contributed to world peace. I think we can take that hugely forward today in the global society we all live in. But I think the key thing is it's a two-way relationship, your travels. So it's not just about you, it's about who you meet and the friendships and the working relationships that you're going to build up with the people that you meet and what you then do with that. Our mission, just to remind you, as his national memorial, we carry forward his legacy by funding British citizens from all walks of life to travel overseas to bring back knowledge and best practice for the benefit of others in your profession and your community. That is what we're aiming for. We've chosen you as individuals, but we've chosen you for what you're going to do to other people. And I think if you just measure your fellowship, and I'll come back to that in a minute, against two purposes of your fellowship. The first one is you as individuals. And you will be primarily the best judge of that, but your peers, your bosses and your subordinates will also be the judge of that. We hope to widen your individual experience, that you will grow in confidence, knowledge and authority and ambition, and to bring benefit to others in the UK through sharing the results of your travel experience. We are expecting you at the very least to be role models, and at best to be leaders in your profession and show the way and inspire other people. So there is a personal perspective to your fellowship, which please don't underestimate. 1,182 people applied for fellowship, and only 137 people were, were awarded one. So it's a 9.5 to 1 success rate, or 1 in 9.5. So you are stars already as far as we are concerned, and you should treat yourself, in all modesty, of course, as stars. But the second one, and the real test of a fellowship, is that we will judge you, and others will judge you, by the results provided by your example in terms of your subsequent performance and achievements and the dissemination and application of new knowledge, different perspectives and innovative solutions. So that is what we are going to judge you on, but we're not really going to be judging you, but that's what we hope to inspire you to achieve. And I think you just need to bear that in mind as you go. I'll come back to that in a tick. Now, to start with planning, and there'll be more about that with personal examples. But if I can just draw your attention to stuff which you've got already, the first thing is the Fellowship Handbook, which you've all got. It might be boring, but it's gold dust on that. And Julia Weston, who's our Fellowship Manager, um, who will be your key contact, as will Haj at the back, um, they'll get really pissed off if you ask them a question and they'll say, look at Paris 16, because it's there. Um, secondly, there's planning and tips for travel fellows, which I think you've all got. These are from fellows like yourself. Again, they're more than gold dust. They're the little tips and bits and pieces, and the three speakers will add to those as well. And they really are, because although you've been on holidays, I suspect, with your family, or been to you know, stag parties in Ibiza, or whatever it might be, when you're in Detroit by yourself, um, and you know no one, and your contact has failed, you will say, oh, God, what do I do next? Um, you will, of course, survive. And the, first, and the third one, which you're about to get, is from Diversity Travel, called the highs and lows of booking. Diversity are our preferred travel booker, because not least of which, because they give us charity rates. And they've got some quite useful tips in there. Some of you have already booked already. Um, the cheaper the flight you can get uh, through Diversity or elsewhere, and you'll find Diversity hard to beat, but occasionally you can, um, the more money you've then got available um, to spend on your subsistence and all the rest of it um, as we go along. So please do read those things there. My next one really is fellowship objectives. You all put down your objectives when you submitted your original application. You then fine-tuned them for if it's your second follow-up one when you came for interview. And you may be fine-tuning them as a result of the contacts you've made already. We don't mind that. But before you go, lock them in. Please, because you need to focus during your travels on what you want to achieve and measure your progress against those objectives. At the end of each week, and then each day, depending on how you want to play it, just review what you've done in that day, but particularly what, you, what you've reviewed done in that week. Put it down 
on paper or in your laptop or whatever it might be or in your iPad because that will form the record of your trip which will be useful for your report but measure yourself against your maximum three I would suggest objectives that you hope to achieve during your trip you will find opportunities keep one day a week completely free because you'll find contacts will develop when you're there use those opportunities but don't be distracted down rabbit holes you will find amazing people will say to you, you really got to go and see so-and-so. Go and see them. But you've got to be brutally, you've got to be brutally clear about what is core to your objective uh, and what is not. Otherwise, it could finish up as a wasted effort. Um, so seize the moment. Also, seize the moment to enjoy yourself because we don't expect you to work seven days a week. We expect you to enjoy yourself, we hope that you'll extend your fellowship by a week or so to bring your partner and friend out or whatever, uh, enjoy yourself, and we give you travel insurance and hold insurance to cover that period. Use it. This is a, a, a unique opportunity um, to do that. We don't expect you to send blogs back saying, having a fantastic time at a barbecue on a beach and all being paid for. We'll spot it, probably. Um, don't forget that it is a two-way experience. The more you give, the more you will get back. So take a presentation, take some notes about what you do to tell them. You may well find that what you're doing is best practice. And you may not come back learning anything new other than actually what you're doing is absolutely correct. I doubt it. But, um, so, but they will, if, the more you give them, the more they will be, have confidence in, in you. So the more you can tell them what you're doing, what your background is, what your current job is before you go, that gives them the greater confidence there. And through that, you'll make friendships and working relationships that will last for life. I do assure you on that one. Do aim high. You know, we advise people to aim at least two up. So, you know, go for the, go for the chief executive of the hospital. The Churchill Fellow name, the Churchill Fellow badge, carries huge weight in North America and in Australasia. And the Churchill name is probably better known in India, although they weren't frightfully pro-Churchill, but I mean they, you know, because he was rather against independence, but the Churchill name is there and they respect it and it opens doors. It's probably better known outside UK than it perhaps is known inside UK. That's a fact of life. Um, do know in your own mind who Churchill was. He's not a dog who sells insurance. Um, <laughs> And there's a very good download on our homepage, Who Was Churchill, which will give you the basic facts, because some people may well ask. And in all your professions, Churchill seems to have left his mark in almost everything with a famous quote or a joke or whatever. So do take that with you, because it sort of adds. And the Churchill crowns are very good little presents. And take, take British presents or take little presents which are you know, tea towels or something silly, because they do, they really do appreciate it. In North America, coins are the sort of great exchange um, I got the greatest change item. Um, so be clear in your objectives, measure them, and follow them through, because that's the basis of what you're going to achieve. On return, um, measure yourself against your objectives and the two criteria that we're setting for you. One, for you as an individual to benefit and what you then do with your life, but secondly, what you're going to do with other people. And it's very important that I think that you don't underestimate the individual benefits because this is a wonderful opportunity. Your boss is not there. None of your peers are there. You, know, you can make as much or as little as you want of this fellowship. If you don't make much of it, um, you, know, you will have let yourselves down. I think that, that would be the bottom line, and you have failed to have seized an opportunity. But in the benefits to the others, there's a simple phrase which you ought to judge yourself, can I make a difference? And then in years to come, have I made a difference? That, I think, is, and you'll hear from the three there. Finally, on reports. We're going to talk about that later on. This is not a challenge. For you in the medical profession, you're probably used to writing umpteen reports every day of, all, every day of your lives. But what we really want in the reports, and we've given you some guidance, I think, in the fellowship notes about that, um, you will know from your own jobs what sort of report your bosses want. Do they want an evidence-based one, which is going to be published in a scientific magazine? Some of you, yes. Do they want some practical recommendations with enough evidence to back that up? Your report's not written for us. It's to be written for your profession. It's for, to be written for you. It's your opportunity for your recommendations to make a difference in your profession. So your report should be measured against that. And you'll hear more about that later on. 
Finally, and I've spoken quite enough, a fellowship is for life as far as we're concerned. You're entering the traveling phase. Um, when you come back, um, Hajj at the back will be the focal point when you return to help you with our partners coordinate all the information across all the fellows to help you disseminate it and with Helen who's acting as cameraman today who's our PR manager will help her with your PR um, and then in the review process because increasingly for the Churchill Trust days of old we do just you send the individual items and that when you, once you went that was you now we're keen to help you in your area in the general area actually have an impact because it may be difficult for you to break through the administrative system and we can help you go out the flank and come back in. And of course, that's why our expert panel of expertise are there. And that's where our partners, the Burdett Trust, the Royal College of Nursing and FONS, are also in this, will help you disseminate that, those reports as well.